In this video, we hope to solve a bookshelf organization problem. We cannot find the books we know we have that we want to read again. We cannot keep track of books we want to read and haven't yet. And we stand face to face with very messy bookshelves throughout most of the rooms in our house. We do not have any book organization for hundreds of books. Now, I am a minimalist, but I do not have any anxiety about the number of books we actually have. I have anxiety about the organization of the books that we have. I can't find a few of our library books that are due back. When it comes to stuff, I know I have reached the magic number of any item when it doesn't feel like it's too much or too little. A nice simple balance of less and more lands me at a practical minimalist living lifestyle. Our kids pick books to read at night and then they toss them on the nearest shelf or floor or nightstand. It doesn't get put back to where they got the book from. That speaks to habits and that needs to be established for all of us. I am not great at that either. We have an environment here where books just go wherever they go. They land all over in our house. So I want to kind of change that environment in our house. Our older two kids are reading chapter books now and they continue reading the same book the next night. So it makes sense to leave it next to their bed for the next night instead of putting it back on their shelf. Books are used for home unit studies like that and homeschool reference books. They are not organized by topic in our house. They are just mixed everywhere. They're in the kids' rooms. They're in the bookshelves outside the bathroom. They're in here in the library. They are on the homeschool cart. They're all over the place. So here's my plan. I'm going to tackle the lack of bookshelf organization and we're going to gather, sort, declutter, organize, and then work on maintenance to establish a permanent home for the series, the author, and the genres, however I decide to organize this, and then plus declutter some of our books from our inventory as we organize. The books on this table are most, this is what I wanted to tackle right here. The kids' books and my books. This does not include any books we have on our homeschool cart that are just already ready for school. It doesn't include my Bible, which just lives here. And then it doesn't include my cookbooks, which just live here. And then it doesn't include Andy's books. So Andy has some first editions. He has some series, some favorite authors that are all in the library already. And then he has some brewing books here. In here I could probably put all the brewing books onto one shelf so as I sort and declutter this hot mess I'll have to choose a shelf in the library or a shelf from the kids bookshelves to start to put stuff back I brainstormed in advance some authors and genres and series that I knew we'd want to hang on to and started making myself a little list in my phone of how I wanted to do some bookshelf organization to get it back onto the shelf. What I'm gonna do though is just as we go make those piles. Pick a shelf and I'm going to sort first and declutter second. I am referencing my own decluttering decision map for books printable. It is available for free from my website and the link is in the description box below for you. The main goal for me is to be able to easily find certain books that I know we have. For me, I want one or two shelves with my books that I have read and continue to read and reference again and again, as well as books I want to read that I haven't read yet. I read about 70 books a year and that does not include the books that I read to the kids. I mostly read on the Kindle. I read maybe 10 or 12 actual physical books as part of that 70-ish number each year. I track my reading lists on Goodreads. If you'd like to join me on there, I can leave a link below for that as well. Since we homeschool, I want to be able to collect all the books on science and history easily and quickly. My oldest is an avid reader and my other two kids are following in his footsteps. They, I mean, he reads like a chapter book a day kind of reader. And I wanna challenge him to read some new series and make it possible for him to easily reread all of his favorites. My middle child, my daughter, has started reading chapter books and she gains so much confidence by finishing one. I want her to be able to easily shop 
for early chapter readers that are going to give her that confidence and continue to improve her reading fluency. My youngest is five and he started reading, he just out of the blue started reading and sounding out letters to decode words and he's reading independently and I want to feel, I, I want to fuel that newfound ability with books that boost his reading confidence while also challenging him to stretch his reading just a little bit. And lastly, I want to respect my husband's bookshelf organization because he has it figured out. <laughs> when we did the makeover of this living room and we turned it into our home library, he had bins and bins and bins from the basement. He gathered all of the books that he knew he had. He sorted them by author, by genre, by first editions. Then he decluttered his duplicates, anything he really didn't want to hang on to. Then he organized by shelf. And his maintenance is exactly the habit building I want the kids and I to get to. Where he takes a book off, he reads it, and he puts it back where it belongs. My goal here for him is to simply respect his existing space and his existing systems and leave his bookshelf organization as it is and let him grow his own collections. We are all big readers in our house. It's just part of homeschool every morning. It's part of our hour before bedtime. Sometimes the kids play or read to each other at night and sometimes they just lay next to us and read their own books while we read our books. So we have lots of books. <laughs> Sometimes owning less helps simplify your life. A smaller number of books would certainly be easy to keep track of, maintain as an inventory category, but decluttering books just to have less to deal with might not be the answer I need in my life right now. I don't know that until I've actually gathered and sorted all of the books that I am considering. So many times living with less is my go-to answer for simplifying a space. While it may be true for some of you watching that less books is your answer, I don't know that that's my answer today. We're gonna find out. I've decluttered books many times before and continue to curate and cull books as we go through them. It's, it's like a tide, it ebbs and flows in our house. Sometimes we have a lot of books and then I declutter a lot of books and then we resupply and we use our library and when I've read a book and I know I won't read it again, I give it away. I don't keep it. I, I know my problem is really going to come down to habits and that last step of maintaining this inventory that I am reshelving in an organized way. I am sure I'm going to have some kind of a declutter stack as a result of this project. We've outgrown some of these books. Some of them are just going to have to be destined for trash, unfortunately. I don't like trashing books, but sometimes they're just so destroyed from food use. Uh, just the covers are torn off, the pages are ruined, and sometimes you just have to trash a book. There's a book drop at the library for gently used books, so I'm going to keep that as an option for giving away any books that we have decided to, giving, to give away. I'm going into this with three things in my brain that are going to help me with bookshelf organization. Accessibility for me and the kids, organization, and then recognizing decluttering emotions, like what's holding me back from letting go of books. So accessibility, books are something I want to keep around in their faces. It's, it, I just like that the kids can grab a book and flip through it. Uh, and so making books accessible to them is important to me. For organization, I definitely wanna have all of our homeschool reference books together. They are just all over the place and I can never find the book that I'm thinking of. So our history books, our electricity books, our solar system books, uh, my friend Katie at Life in the Mundane has a great circle sticker system that she organizes her homeschool books for, for genres and reading levels. I think she has six children, so she has a lot that she maintains for different reading levels. I'm going to leave a link to Katie's video below, so if that's your style, please go check her out. She, ha she offers a really great color sticker, circle sticker management system. And lastly, really making sure that I'm being ruthless and honest about the books that I do choose to keep as an inventory here and recognizing what is holding me back. Is it financial guilt? That question of what if we want this book later on? What if this is the book that resonates with one of my kids versus some other book that I didn't keep or did keep? Like our space books, for instance. Okay, so here's what I've done so far. These are all keep stacks, but they're specific sorts. 
These are my Bible books, my daughter's books, my eight-year-old's books, my five-year-old's books. Just kids' books for keeping. These are school books that I would like to be in the library. And then a Pete the Cat stack, Veggie Tales. This is my stack started. This is seasonal. So it's got Easter, fall, spring. Um, and then these are just the Good Night Moon stack. I think there's a third one. And then over here are the ones I've already chosen to donate. We have, we have a bunch of kids' Bibles, so I'm just getting rid of a couple of them. And then there's also a book drop that's by my library. I may use that as well. And then I just keep throwing chapter books into this. Clearly, it's not big enough. It took me about two hours, but I went through and touched every single book and sorted it into individual piles that I was thinking for bookshelf organization. I really tried to give the second step of sorting with gathering being the first and sorting being second, decluttering being third. I tried to give that second step of sorting its, its right job. I tried not to declutter as I was going along. Anything that was obviously declutter, I, I just moved it into a declutter pile. You know, books that were duplicates or just trash or things I knew we would never ever read again. And just really tried to sort by author, by kids, by kid, by school subject, and really tried to give respect to that second step of sorting before I empowered myself to start making those decluttering decisions. Okay, so everything on this bench is keep. Everything on the table is keep. This is chapter books that I still need to do, but these are what that's what goes in there. And then I have this, as donate these three stacks as donate that's my initial donate that came out from sorting now as I actually go to put things back onto shelves I think I'm gonna end up decluttering more then I'm gonna double back and do chapter books because I just don't have the space to situate that so I just don't have the space to do that all right um here's what I'm gonna do oh and hi, six library books, okay? We have this bag hanging here. It's our library returns bag. When we're done with a library book, we put it in here. The library books got scattered throughout the house because the kids were reading them in their room. And again, that speaks really to that last step of maintenance and habits of returning things where they belong. I think I'm gonna start with just putting the ones I've chosen for the kids to have in their rooms. Like this is my daughter's, this is my uh, eight-year-old's, and then this is my five-year-old's. These are all like their favorite things that they read over and over in their rooms at night. So I'm just gonna start with those because those are definitely gonna go back on the shelves. Okay. I'm adding two more to the declutter stack here. These are the ones that I've set aside for my five-year-old that he loves, adores, and would not want to be without. Oh, I forgot he still has some over here too. Whoopsie. And he loves this one. These are all ones he's, he loves. There's no reason for me to declutter for the sake of decluttering, especially when it comes to books for kids. So I'm just going to go put these on his shelf and do some... Um, bookshelf organization for my five-year-old these are his absolute favorite these bear books every night we have to read a bear book he's always looking for his bear books so now everything will be great and organized for him this whole shelf is going to be Jackson's. It is not filled. This way he can easily put a book back and find the books that he looks for the most. That's his Kindle. He sleeps there. And then my eight-year-old's Kindle can go there. And then my eight-year-old has a shelf over here for all of his chapter books. 
these are all the ones I've chosen to keep for my daughter that she really likes reading over and over. So I'm just actually gonna put this whole bin in her room because she doesn't have bookshelves in her room. Okay, I put all of Andy's beer, bro beer brewing books on one shelf. I already have something in mind. I'm gonna make that the science shelf. That'll get rid of a really nice stack from here, 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 and here. Although that's too many science books. Okay, I'm gonna start with space and see how much space I have left. <laughs> see what I do there? Okay, of course you go. Okay, space. There's some more. Okay. <laughs> I have an atrocious amount of space books. They're so heavy. Okay. We don't need that many books on the solar system. We just don't. I'm going to put them upright and then declutter. Okay, I had to go up a shelf because they're actually tall. <laughs> they didn't fit here. So I had to go up a shelf. I still don't need this many. Okay, so my eight-year-old really likes this one. I love everything DK. This Planets book was our first book on the solar system and we still look at it regularly. I have, well, I have two Smithsonian super space books. I'm gonna take a second look at all of these and use my decluttering map series of questions to figure out if I should keep anything. I found a second Professor Astro Cat, so that's automatically in the declutter pile. So my decluttering map, have you read this book yet? These bottom two we haven't. I bought them to go with curriculum for the co-op that we didn't need to buy. Will you read it or reference it again? Well, we reference planets. One of these, I'm gonna keep one of these. They're like essentially the same thing. So I'm gonna keep one of those. The rest of these, I'm gonna say we are not going to read it and reference again because I don't think there's anything, there's nothing in this one that we can't get out of this one or this one. This is the one I'm questioning. Although, if I look at my decluttering map, have you read this yet? No. Will you? Maybe. So does my library have it? If my library has it, then I could just say that I could donate it. My eight-year-old would read this. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep that one. The rest of these are new, and then I'm going to try to decide between these two. I'm going to keep this one. Not only do I like it better, my library has that one. So my decluttering map tells me to try to let go of that one. These are all the space books I'm letting go of, which as a homeschool teacher is huge for me because I think I might want to reference these, but I never really do. And just being honest with myself and saying, these are the books that we actually like and read and would reference and pull out and explore. So why hang on? I mean, I got rid of half our space books. And I actually love the selection I have now. I feel great about this decision. I have to go through the same process as this. My five-year-old loves flipping through this and asks questions. And that's really what you wanna get from a five-year-old flipping through a book. So I'm gonna keep this one. This one is just beautiful. And we adore this one with the stories and just the colors are just so magnificent. So I'm keeping that one. I'm debating between these two. They are essentially the same thing. And again, this was to go with some curriculum for co-op that I didn't need to buy. That's neither here nor there. 
It's a really beautiful book. I mean, this is essentially the same thing, both the DK Smithsonian. So, okay, so this one can go. This one was to go with that curriculum also. They're just stories. Text is too small for my old eyes. And then this one. I'm on the fence about this one. Okay, let's use the decluttering map. Have you read it before? No. Will you honestly ever read it? Highly unlikely. Does the library, I mean, it's not even a maybe. It's, it's more on the no side. Does the library have it? Yes. All right. Getting rid of three. I'm going to keep these three because I'm not 100% letting go of this one, even though we have this one. Um, sometimes when we talk about the animal kingdom, one kid has one. I mean, we have multiple books that we like. Okay, this is the declutter pile. I had to move it off of the bench. Look at this. We're doing great. This is a fantasy me book. I never should have bought it. I never even opened it. I'm not going to. I went through a phase where I thought we might do that. This is general science, just miscellaneous science and math and coding books. These are my books that I've decided to keep. And then we have our puzzles. And then on the bottom shelf, I have books that are just humongous, but the kids really, really love to flip through. So I made them very accessible. Okay, over here, we ended up with our solar system books and some human body books that we have. And then a why, uh, over a thousand questions. My eight year old read that cover to cover. So we're keeping it. I mean, like last month, read it cover to cover. Here I have history and geography and music. And then Andy's brewing books. Okay. I really didn't touch anything over here. We've got photo albums on the bottom that the kids really love flipping through. I had to double up the video games there. And then Andy's collections. I left alone. But I still have all this. Now I haven't put anything except for my five-year-old's bookshelf. So I still have all of this. Oh, these are mine. Put these on my shelf. It's so nice now, um, and this is really what I wanted to do, was to be able to just come to one shelf for all of the things that I reread or want to read that I still have here. And then anything that I was real about and decided I could get from the library or I wasn't going to read, I put into the declutter pile for myself. And I want to be able to come here and grab everything for our music books, everything for history, all the stuff for solar system when we go down that rabbit hole. So that's what I wanted to accomplish and I'm, I'm there. Now I just have, what we have left are chapter books and books that I chose to keep for the children to continue to read. So they just need to go in the bookshelves upstairs. Instead of putting these back on their bookshelves upstairs accessible to them. I'm, I've got all of our seasonal stuff here with the school books. If they want to read them, of course, I will take them off the shelves for them, but otherwise we really only read it during that season. I'm, I'm motivated to finish, but I'm stuck because I know if I go put all of these books back on the kids' bookshelves outside the bathroom and on in their bedrooms, they're just gonna end up on the floor and disorganized again. So that's my hesitation right now. I could do book rotation or I put them in bins and just kind of rotate them, but I'm a butterfly organizer. I am going to forget that I put some stuff in storage bins. I'm just gonna forget. Book rotation and toy rotation is hard for me because if I don't see it, I forget about it. Less on the bookshelves would be good. I think I need to be a little more ruthless about what I've chosen to keep to put back onto their shelves. I think that's the answer. Less. These are Pete the Cat Keep. And these are Pete the Cat. I'm gonna make a pile for trash. I have a stack that the books are just shredded and they, and they shouldn't be given away. Um, and then sort through these for keep. So these are all declutter. Okay. This one has something all over it. That's gonna be garbage. I can get this one from the library. I tried reading this aloud once. They weren't ready for it, and I can get it from the library. 
Some of these are just fine to keep and I'm just gonna have a mess and it is what it is and that's okay. I mean, if the kids love reading them and hearing them, why would I get rid of them just for the sake of not, of avoiding the mess, you know? We have other Usborne readers. <clears throat> Everybody's kind of past that. Some of these we keep just because I love them. This is a stack of like bedtime specific go to sleep books. Then these are kind of, they're fast reads, but she was my favorite author when they were really little and we would read all the time. Um, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not going to force it. I like these books. The kids still will let me read them <laughs> to them at night, so that's fine. Or these are all the ones I need to get upstairs. Uh -oh. Rebex, this is going to be your project. All the series, the same series in the same pile. So that's all the Zoe and Sassafras. This will be all the Dragon Masters. This will be super, super tubo. And you're just going to make piles. These stacks of books. Could you get them onto the bookshelves outside the bathroom upstairs? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Can I just mess it all up? Then if you put them on nice, that would be nice for me. Dragon Masters. Nice, you keeper. We have this on our computer. Mm -hmm. guys guys is there anything here that we could donate you were excited when you got last fire hawk out of the bin yesterday oh yeah okay. well i never read these because they're kind of boring i tried one once and it was boring okay mm -hmm. now these you didn't even try these i did they were boring they were boring these are math mysteries Okay. I'm, Copy that. I'm keep I'm keeping Rosie Romero in a the Hardy Boys is That's Hardy, fine. The Hardy Boys is an interesting series, so I'm gonna keep that. You're gonna keep that one. Good job. I think grandma gave me that. Keep. I don't really need okay. this anymore. I'm the keeper. I have on my Kindle. I still read all those. And yeah, I suspect you're gonna like it. Yep, and so Becca, you have Mercy Watson, the startup chicken squad. Becca, there's a lot here you might be interested in starting. I don't need this. Okay. I never really read this. Okay. Good job, Brennan. I never really read this either. Okay. I buy you the first book what? of series, and then if you don't like them, we don't get more. Or you read them on your Kindle. Brennan, you're doing a great job. Pete? Look, they have numbers on the side, so you can start with book one. Okay. So... Right now, we're just deciding if we want to get rid of anything else. How about Plants vs. Zombies? Could that go? No, I didn't think One so. One of my favorite series. I thought I'd take a shot. And these are different series, with or without you. This is a different series. So is this. That's a different one here. And this. So these are four different Minecraft series? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this guy, Squid Squad. Um, five. Five yes. different Minecraft series? Okie dokie, Wait. Becca's sorting them out while I'm writing books. Oh, that's a great idea because she doesn't feel good. So you doing like the heavy lifting is helpful for her. Yes. Teamwork makes the... Dream work. And also happiness. <laughs> Here we go. Here's the before of the bookshelves for the kids outside their bedrooms. And here's the after. Way less books to have to tidy and keep after on these shelves. And the boys nightstand bookshelf beforehand. 
and after. This is my five-year-old's shelf. He was overjoyed at this. You can tell he's already taken some books out because they're shifted around. He moved them around in a way that he liked it. He wanted the, the face of the book to, to come out like this so he could read it. And the bookshelves in the library, this is the after. The main point here is I didn't even have a before really because they didn't look terribly messy. It wasn't organized. Now it's all organized. And right over here to the left, where do you see this declutter pile? These are all the books we are going to drop off and donate at the book bin. But we're not done. I still have to figure out chapter books. It feels like a hurdle after running a marathon. <laughs> chapter books. I don't want to pop all of these back on the shelves for them to go on the floor. I feel like what we've put back is significantly less unmanageable. And this will become unmanageable quickly. So what I'm trying to figure out is if maybe chapter books live in the library. So I'm looking here and I definitely have four shelves right there with photo albums and I could fit those chapter books. Then the question becomes, is there a better place for photo albums? There's my mom made all of these binders for each of the kids. <laughs> these are their baby books and then that she does a two-year span on their binders and it's just filled with photographs and the the kids love to sit here and look at their photos the library has these so i'm gonna add these to the donate stack that is gonna be a lot to put into the car <laughs> and then i put uh the minecraft and plants and zombies series there as well as well as the story treehouse series i didn't put them in order just cause, and then I put a lot of the chapter books in this basket, just sitting here. I thought that was kind of, sort of nice. There's some dog hair and a ninja star, so, you know, it really completes it. Just put, I just shoved more photo albums in there. Those binders are seriously so massive and ridiculous. <laughs> the kids pull them out, it seems no problem. I need like four hands to pull it out. It's so heavy. I don't know how my mom did it. These are kind of all the ones my daughter wants to read right now. And then we have Magic Treehouse. I don't know yet what I'm gonna do about Magic Treehouse. I'm inclined to give that to a friend, to be honest. All right, I found this. So I'm just gonna put the ones that she asked to be able to start reading. She's already read, she read this one three times. I mean, this series three times. It really just kind of puts them in a holding pattern until we can figure out a good way to have chapter books. Oh, look at that. I did it. Okay, my oldest liked the graphic novel version. I think there's only two out so far. I'm inclined, my kids wouldn't, I'm done. My kids would not even notice that these were missing because they don't read them and I can get them all from the library. Done, I'm gonna give these away too. Look at all of these books for donation. I'm gonna drop them off at the book bin at the library. And kids would love to drop them at the book bin, so. Look at that, what is that? A couple hundred books? No, 100 books, probably? What do you think, Range? How many, let's count. I was actually not that far off. It's 179 books that I am decluttering from the house and donating to the book bin. Wow, that's great. This all used to be stuff that would end up on the floor that nobody was reading anyway. So it really helps elevate and prioritize the things that they do read. And the ones that they read over and over. Plus we really, really utilize the library a lot. So this is whew, therapeutic. And then I have all the things I use for school here in one shopping spot. Perfect. And I also supplement a ton from the library as well. And then all my books on one shelf. I mostly read on the Kindle. So that makes sense. And Andy's, we left Andy's untouched. I am supremely happy at this bookshelf organization. I am like over the moon. 
Thank you for spending a part of your day with me. Would love to read your comments about how books make you feel in your home. And I hope you have a wonderful day.